just about. Everybody can see okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, so before we start, just some vocabulary for different types of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Congratulations, Leon. Oh. I think this is your first nine o'clock class with me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I didn't notice. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody know what this one is? I think maybe some people know this one already. Um, uh, maybe you can push it back a little bit. Push the projector back. Yeah, more? Oh, no, closer, closer, closer. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Oh. Okay, does anyone know the name of this? This one. Real number. Real number. So, uh, what are they? What's a real number? Oh. Yeah. Any number bigger than zero. Oh, smaller than zero, yeah. yeah. Uh, for us, really, it's any number. It's any number. Okay, what about this one? Do you know the name of this one? Maybe my Spanish Portuguese speakers could have a guess. Do you know what it is in your native language? Oh, wait, I thought you won't be able to guess. Not that one. Integers. Now, these are the numbers like this. These are like minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, etc. They're the integers. Okay. Natural numbers. Now, what are the natural numbers? Natural numbers? What are they? Mm -hmm. Give me the numbers. What's the first few? Yeah, well, this is the thing now. One, two, three, etc. Well, this is my question now. Zero. Do we count it or not count it? Mm -hmm. What do we think? Does anyone know? No. Okay, some say no. Some say yes. In fact, unfortunately, some books say yes. And some books say no. What is uh, the reason? Uh, I don't know the reason why. I don't know the reason why. Um, so, to prevent confusion, what people do is they write... Let me just double check. Yeah. So if you write this, it means the natural numbers with zero. So it's the natural numbers uh, with zero included. So if you want, that's zero, one, two, three. And if you write this, it's the natural numbers <coughs> without the zero. One, two, three. Uh, it's unfortunate <coughs> because I have um, I have one math book at home that includes the zero, and I have another math book that doesn't include the zero. Um, and I think in the exam, unfortunately, <coughs> whoever writes the exam 
is a little bit careless about this because they just use n and they don't say if you should include zero or not so what I need to do is I need to double check um, what they do in the UK because the person who writes the exam uh, lives in not in Manchester they live near Man uh oh it's moving So um, the person who writes your exam lives in the UK, so we should probably check in the UK what they used. <coughs> um, I didn't see the word na natural anywhere here. It doesn't say. <coughs> natural numbers. GCSE. Types of numbers, here we go. Um, I have a feeling that in the UK they don't include zero, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, uh, so in the UK, if you just say natural numbers, they mean one, two, three. But I definitely have math books at home that would include zero. Okay, so. If this was an exam question and they just said natural numbers, you probably shouldn't include the zero. Okay. Right, now let's have a look. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, there's one more to do actually. The Q here. Does anyone know this one? Very good. It's called the rational numbers. But do you know what they are? Rational numbers, anyone know these ones? No? Like numbers yeah. that are written. Uh, yeah. With the yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't very well see. Fraction? Yeah. Fraction. <laughs> fraction, yeah. So, rational numbers are numbers that you can write as a fraction. Yeah. Where, um, P and Q are integers, and of course Q is definitely not zero. So these are rational numbers, fractions basically. Okay. Now that we have these um, definitions, we can do some examples now, because what we're going to have a look at today is um, inequalities. Can I go down? Yep. Right, well, we'll start off with the very, very, very basics. Um, if you have an inequality, that's something like this. Or if you want, we can make it a little bit clearer. A, B, greater than C plus D. Um, all the normal rules are still true. So the normal rules are true, with one exception. And that one exception is if you uh, accept, if you multiply or divide by, by a minus, yeah, by a negative. So what happens when you multiply or divide by a negative? Change. Uh, yeah, it flips it around. So uh, that just means flips. So for example, if two is less than three and you multiply both sides by a minus, you get minus two is bigger than minus three. Um, so that that is the only extra thing you need to remember. Other than that, all the other rules are the same. You know, you can bring things to the other side. Um, you can divide and multiply. But if it's a minus, it just gets flipped. So it's if I wrote something like one plus one is less than three, it's fine to say one is less than three minus one. You can still bring things over as normal. Uh, one thing to be careful about though, if I write something like minus a plus b is less than c, if I multiply the minus in here, nothing happens to this. 
The flipping only takes place when both sides get multiplied by a minus. Sometimes students get confused and they think, oh, when I multiply this in, I must change this. No. Okay, we'll have a look at some examples now. Can I go down? Yeah. Okay, so the first example is minus 5x is less than x plus 6, and x is a real number. So just, this is easy peasy, that's uh, minus 6x is less than or equal to 6. So then x is greater than or equal to 6 over minus 6. So x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Yep. Now, before I do the next example, I have some more words to give you. Can I scroll down? Um, when I write something like this, it means all the numbers which are bigger than A and smaller than B, which are real. So for example, if I write like this 1 to 9, that would mean all the numbers from 1 to 9. So like 1.1, 1 1.2, 2.5, 3.4, 5, 6.9, all the numbers in between. Not including, not including 1 or 9. Okay. If I write this, it means all the numbers from A to B, including A and B. We call this here um, open. This is called an open set, and this is called a closed set. By the way, what do you think this means? Yeah, what numbers are these? Yeah, so this is in fact the same thing as saying all real numbers. Um, what do you think this is? One zero and all the numbers between zero. Yeah, and also numbers between zero and one as well. So in other words, this is just all the numbers less than one. Because it's all the numbers from minus infinity to one. And then lastly is an example if I said two uh, 2 to infinity, and you can have it closed on the left, meaning include the 2. So what would this be? Uh, all the numbers... Equal to 2? Yeah, all the numbers equal to 2 and and or bigger. All the numbers bigger or equal to 2. Up to infinity, yeah. Okay. So the reason I'm showing you this, uh, these are called sets. Hey, what happened to you? Uh, that topic was quite good this morning, actually. Um, okay, the reason I say this is because in the exam, they sometimes ask you to write your answer as a set. So if I go back to my previous example, what would this be? So firstly, is it open or closed? Closed. Open. open. Minus infinity, comma, minus one, minus one closed. closed. So another way of saying this answer uh, is like this. And this is the answer as a, what's called a set. Now, that's important because the question could sometimes say, you have to read it very carefully, find the set of answers. So if you see the word set, you must give your answer like this. If the question didn't say set, if it just said find the answers, then you can give your answer like this. Okay? But if you see the word set, it must be like this. So be careful because sometimes students lose one mark because they forget or they don't see that it needs to be a set. So just be careful with that. Okay, can I go back down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so um, let's look at one that's a little bit more difficult. Question? No? no? Uh, let's look at one that's a little bit more difficult. Yeah? Question? No? Are you sure? Yeah, okay. Do you need me to go back? 
Do you have all of this? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Um, minus 11 is less than or equal to minus 4x plus 5 is less than or equal to 13. Which one? No, no. For which one? Uh oh. Yeah, why don't you say something sooner? <laughs> Thank you. Minus one infinity. Yeah, my brain's not working right this morning. All right, you need to fix that. Is this what you were going to say? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, uh, but I'm going to do another example, and I'll give the answer as a set as well. Okay. So in this one, x is all the natural numbers, including zero. There's two ways to do this one. So the first way is to separate it as two problems. You have to say, so this is method one. Minus 11 is smaller than minus 4x plus 5 and minus 4x plus 5 is smaller than or equal to 13. So you do them separately. Uh, so here you get 4x is less than or equal to 16 and minus 4x is less than or equal to 8. x is less than or equal to 4, and x is bigger than or equal to minus 2. So therefore, got this? Therefore, tell me why, uh, if I write this, it's wrong. So this is not the answer. Tell me what mistake I'm making. This is a mistake. That's not the answer. Why is this wrong? It doesn't like include all the numbers. Not quite. This is all the numbers bigger than minus yeah. 2 and smaller than 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that uh, they're natural numbers. So sometimes students make this mistake in the exam and give the answer like this. But this is all the numbers from minus 2 to 4, including like 2.1 or 4.1 or 3.1 or whatever. So what is the answer here? What would be the answer here? Mm -hmm. Not this? Yes. 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are the natural numbers which are bigger than minus 2 but smaller than 4 or equal to 4. Notice I don't have any negative numbers because natural numbers aren't negative. Yeah. So this is how you give the answer here as a set. X could be 1, 2, 3, or 4. These are the numbers which are smaller than 4 and bigger than minus 2. Yeah? I said there's two ways to do it, so I'll show you a second way now. Yeah? Here? The N? X is an N. An N. No, actually, it's okay just to write it like this. Um, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm saying if I use this, this and this together, it makes this as the answer. Yeah. If they like didn't say that yeah, good question. If they didn't say this, if they just said nothing, then you can take it to mean this, real numbers. And they're the answer in that case would be minus 2 to 4, okay. all the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Can I show you the second way to do this? <coughs> yes, when there's a little star, it means uh, no zero. Yeah. 
Questions? No? Okay, so I said there's a second way to do it. Can I go down? Yeah, so the second way to do it, and I'll use another example actually. Um, I'll say minus 11 less than or equal to minus 2x minus 17 less than or equal to 5, and this time x is an integer. Okay, so what you do here is you keep it all together. You add 17 to every uh, expression. So, what happens in the middle? Well, you can see that that and that will cancel. Yeah, so you're left with 6 less than or equal to minus 2x, less than or equal to 22. Now what do you think is next? Divide by minus 2. Minus, minus two. 2. Minus 2. Yeah. So, and change as well. So you get 3 must be bigger than or equal to x, and x must be bigger than or equal to minus 11. Slightly easier way to write it is... Oh, minus 3. A uh, slightly easier way to write it is minus 11 must be smaller than x, and x must be smaller than minus 3. It's the same thing. But let's not forget I said that x must be an integer. So I can't use, for example, I can't use minus 2.5. x <coughs> must be an integer. So that means I can only have minus uh, 11, minus 10. Ah, why are you so late? The yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bad? Uh, it's like the, uh, you're late to Oh, just, just sit down, sit down, <laughs> sit down. Sit. One seat left. Yeah. Uh, Wait, wait, uh, maybe it would be easier if you walk around that way because of the cable. Go this way around. You'll have to push your desk forward. Why don't you just move one seat over and let him in there? Oh, no, there's a seat there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so the answer here is... What's wrong? There's a table there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> All right, that makes things more interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's interesting. How are you going to do this? Right, uh, so here x is minus 11, what's next? Minus 10, minus, 10, minus 9, dot, 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 until no. minus 3. Minus okay? Next one? Yep. Alright. So, for example, here. <coughs> 21x squared plus 32x plus 12 is bigger than a re Oh my goodness. Uh, bigger. Yeah. Closing the blind or opening the window? I think you could open the window as well. It's a little bit warm. Oh, it's hard to see? Can you see? Or it's, okay. it's okay? All right. Sorry, that's a plus 12 at the end. And X is a real number. OK, 
Okay, there are again two ways to do this one. So first way, um, well both ways you need to factorise first. So let me see, uh, x plus x plus three and three seven and you want a thirty two two here? Two? Six? Fourteen? Eighteen? Yeah. <laughs> yes it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So the way you can do this one is by drawing a very quick graph. If you say y equals this you can make this graph um, minus 6 over 7 and minus <coughs> 2 over 3. So there's minus 6 over 7 and there's minus 2 over 3 and there's the graph. Yes? Now, if this is equal to y, that means the height is y. So if you want y to be bigger than or equal to zero, you only want this part of the graph and this part of the graph. You don't want this part. The so y is negative. So if you want the graph to be positive, you need to use x which is smaller than this number and you need to use x which is bigger than this number. So you want x to be smaller than minus 6 over 7 um, or x bigger than or equal to minus 2 over 3. Now this is the way I like to do it because it's the quickest way but there is another way to do it which I'll show you now with another example. If you can't factorize it that's okay. You can just use the formula here and the formula will give you these two numbers anyways. So you don't even need to factorize it. Okay? How we can write these inverses? Hmm? How we can write the inverses? Good. Uh, as a set it will be like this. Minus infinity to 6 over 7. <laughs> Minus 6 over 7 close. And then the symbol for or. Does anyone know it? N or U. Is it U or is it an N? N U or N? N. 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 <coughs> U. 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 Um, minus 2 over 3 to infinity. So, um... This symbol here is like the or. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'll get to that now. So or is this symbol, and then and is this one. Can I have and here? No. You can't have a number which is smaller than this and bigger than this at the same time. Okay, so now the second way to do this. Can I scroll down? No. <coughs> minus 7x squared minus 41x minus 63 is less than minus x squared. Now this minus x squared on the right, that doesn't make it any more difficult. All you need to do is take it to the left. So you will get minus 6x squared minus 41x minus 63 less than or equal to 0. I don't like all the minus here, so I'll multiply or divide by minus 1. So I get 6x squared plus 
plus 41x plus 63 must be this. Yeah? Okay. I still have to factorize. Right, I know it's going to be a plus at least, I know it's going to be a plus, um, I want a 41, 21, no, uh, it is 21, Seven nine. Two. Three. No, 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 three and two. Uh, so that would be 27 and 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so now the next part is what's different. If you want this to be positive, how can you make a positive number when you multiply? Well, you have only two choices. The first choice is you're multiplying a positive by a positive, and the result will be positive. Or... Now, what's your second choice to make a positive? A negative multiply a negative. And here is an or, not an and. Okay. So, in the first situation, to make a positive and a positive, you need 3x plus 7 to be bigger than 0. What's next? And or or? And... and 2x plus 9 to be bigger than 0. So you need x to be bigger than minus 7 over 3 and x needs to be bigger than minus 9 over 2. <coughs> so if you picture this on a number line going to infinity, um, there's minus 9 over 2, and there's minus 7 over 3. This is like 4.5, and this one's like whatever, 2.3. If I need x to be bigger than this number, so I need it to be here, and I need x to be bigger than this number, there's only one way I can have both. What's that? Yeah, x must be bigger than minus 7 over 3. That's the only way it can be bigger than 7 over 3 and bigger than minus 9 over 2 at the same time. So the answer here is this. Now on the other side, you can do something similar. 3x plus 7 must be smaller than or equal to 0. And 2x plus 9 must be smaller than or equal to 0 x must be smaller than minus 7 over 3, and x must be smaller than minus 9 over 2. So again, on your number line, there's minus 9 over 2, and there's um, minus 7 over 3. So I need x to be smaller than minus 7 over 3, and I need x to be smaller than minus 9 over 2. Oh, by the way, if I want to show that I am including minus 9 over 2, I put a dark circle here. And if I want to show I wasn't including, I would put a white circle. But here, I should really put in dark. Include and uh, include. Okay. Right, so the only way x can be smaller than minus 9 over 2 and smaller than minus 7 over 3 is if x is smaller than... Minus 9 over 2. Seriously? Yeah. I just like to use the method that uh, the table gives the rules, <coughs> pause, and big numbers in between. Oh, yeah, so the table. You, you know the sign. I forgot about that one. Um, and then pick, pick the values in the different parts to see which is the positive and negative. Yes. Yeah. Like no, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. Um, yeah, that would work fine. That would work fine, too. Uh, okay. So to finish here, this is um, minus infinity.
to minus 7 over 3 or minus 9 over 2 to infinity. Yeah. No? Yes. Yes? No. no. Bigger than. Bigger, bigger than. Oh no! Not this again. <laughs> Sorry. A uh, number line will help me. Uh, there's minus 9 over 2. There's minus 7 over 3. Bigger than minus 7 over 3. Smaller than <laughs> minus 9 <laughs> over 2. So I should have had minus infinity to minus 9 over 2. Or minus 7 over 3 to infinity. Okay, that's better. Um, there is a third way to do this by using a cable. But um, I think I'm going to stop at two ways. I don't think I need to show you a third way. But if you want to, there is another way to do it. But I personally prefer the first way. With the graph, it's the quickest. Okay, do you have this? Yeah. Right, one more example now. 71 less than or equal to 2x squared plus 20x plus 49 less than or equal to 97 and here I tell you that x is a natural number including 0 ok you got that? yep ok um, the only way the only way to do this is by separating it into two like this So that's the first one, and this is the second one. So I make them into the two. So on the left and on the right, you make a quadratic. So here is 2x squared plus 20x, and then you want 49 minus 71 so that's minus 22 is bigger than 0 and here 2x squared plus 20x and then 49 minus 97 so that's minus 48 that's smaller than 0 I'm going to do this by graph so um, if I just use my formula I'll get x is 1 or x is minus 11. The graph will be this shape. Now, do I want the piece which is above or do I want the piece which is below? Above or below? <coughs> above. So I want here and here. So I want x to be smaller than minus 11 or bigger than 1. Okay, you can do the same thing on this side. 2, 20, 28. So using the quadratic formula, I get 2 and I get minus 12. Make another graph. Now I want less than 0 here. So that means I want the piece which is under the graph which means here I want my x to be bigger than minus 12 but smaller than 2. Now you need to put the answers together. There's a big AND here. So this is where we have to be quite careful how to put these answers together. Can I go down? No, okay.
No. Amazing enough. Yeah, okay, this is rough. This is work for. Can I go down now? Yeah. Oh wow. Mm. Mm. Almost. Now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we want to put these together. Uh, so let me draw my number line in black. So I need to have on it minus 12, minus 11, 1 and 2. So in red here is this one here. You want x to be um, smaller than minus 11. Uh, or x could be bigger than 1. Then in blue, you want x to be bigger than, no sorry, yeah, bigger than minus 12, but smaller than 2. Now between the red and the blue, there's an and. And there's an and between the red and the blue, which means you want to find Thank you. That means you want to find where is the red and the blue true together. So for example, we can't use this piece in the middle because only the blue is true. We can't use the pieces over here because only the red is true. There's only two places where we are happy and that is here is red and blue and here is red and blue. So this is the only time you can have and, the only time you can have both. So you want x to be bigger than minus 12, but smaller than minus 11. Um, no, or, because you want to be here or here. This is where, you see now I can see confusion. Uh, this is where you can have red and blue. So you can, listen, you can have red and blue here or here. So be careful with and and or. So it's minus 12 to minus 11 or 1 to 2. Now this isn't even the final answer. This isn't even its final form. Um, uh, there's still one thing left to do. Yeah. Now, well, nearly, but don't forget at the start, I also said x must be a natural number including zero. Mm -hmm. So we can immediately forget about this, the negative. So if you just look here, this answer and this means the final answer is what? One, One or two. So only the values of x equals one or x equals two will satisfy this inequality. Uh, that one is the most difficult one. It's very long to do, very difficult to do maybe even too difficult for the exam. However, I have definitely seen um, the other questions on the exam. Definitely. In a, I've never seen the last question. In fact, I think it's too difficult for the exam. But definitely the uh, other three types I've seen on the exam many times. Not so much the first one, because that's too simple. The middle two is what's most common. Let me tell you which ones to try now. So in the first question, you can just do y and z. Um, in the second question, u, v, w.
In the third question, CD, and then in the fourth question, J. Go on, lad. So uh, that's actually the end of the algebra chapter. Uh, so usually in the exam, one chapter is one question. So you've done enough to do like one big question in the exam. So we finish algebra, and next time we'll start the next chapter, which is sequence and series. Okay.